Let's go again. Two sheets in front of them. One of them is the roadmap to the ring. The roadmap to the ring. We're going to talk about developing yeah. leaders. And um, the second one is leadership. It's a two page leadership developing a six figure business. Okay? So we're going to kind of be working on both of them at the same time. But we all know that uh, the first fill in on your leadership fill in page is that financial freedom equals what is greater than expenses? Passive, Passive income. income. Passive income. Okay, so your first fill-in is freedom equals passive income when your passive income is greater than your expenses. And let me talk about that for just a second so everyone's on the same page with the concepts we've got here. So, who's read Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yeah. Um, if you have not read that yet, I highly recommend you go out and order from Amazon or even for free on Hoopla, the library app, or go to the library and take out Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Any Robert Kiyosaki book. And in them, he talks about the EBSI quadrant, where E stands for employee. There's four ways to make money in this world. There's the employee quadrant where you're working for somebody else. You're a W-2 employee. You get a paycheck, right? They pay you a paycheck after they've taken out all the taxes. And then you get what's left. And so employees typically pay the most in taxes. And also employees have the, the least amount of what? Leverage. Leverage and freedom, typically. Right. right? When you work for somebody else, you have to show up at a certain time or you have to do certain tasks in order to keep that job. Now, typically, what happens to an employee if they can't work? They get sick, they um, or want to take off or need to take care of a sick family member. What happens to your job if you can't get your asset to work? You lose, lose your job. Right? You lose you your job. Place. I said asset. Right. Okay. So, because you're your only asset as an employee. So, there needs to be um, a plan B usually in there. Robert Kiyosaki said a job is a great place to start, but not necessarily the place to get wealthy or to um, or to end up. Now let's look at the second way to earn income. There's the S quadrant. S quadrant means self-employed. Self so who's an S quadrant person? Doctors. Doctors? Small business owners. Real estate. Small business owners, real estate agents. Beauticians. Beauticians, lawyers. Consultants. Consultants, dentists. Mechanics. Right? Mechanics, there you go. So what's cool about self-employed is you've got, you can make your own schedule. You don't now have to ask when you want to take a vacation or if you want to go to the bathroom. You don't need a permission slip for that. <laughs> However, self-employed actually pays sometimes the most in taxes because now you're paying self-employment uh, self tax, okay? And also a lot of people I talk to that are self-employed, we have a friend that's an attorney. AJ and I, and every time I talk to him, he's like stressed to the gills, stressed. He's like, I work 60 hours a week, my wife says I'm not home enough, but my business partner says I don't work hard enough, you know? And he's like, but it's all dependent on him. Now he makes tons of money, he lives in a really fancy house, he drives a very fancy car, but he doesn't see how he can retire in this, in this area here. But then we get into the B quadrant for business owners, okay? Business, business B quadrant is where you own a business. And this is where you have leverage, okay? The two benefits of owning a business, there's many benefits, but two of them is, number one, you have leverage because you usually have employees or you have a team, right? So there's the real estate agent or there's the real estate broker. 
the broker has lots of agents out selling, so you don't necessarily have to be out selling. Does that make sense? You've got leverage. But then the second thing a business owner has is a lot of tax write-offs. So this is where the tax strategy comes into play, having um, a lot of write-offs. And if you do it right, then you're also not paying the self-employment tax as well. Um, so the freedom, your second feeling is freedom is in the B quadrant. Freedom is in the B quadrant. Because I stands for investor. And there could, but that's when your money's making money for you, you're investing in things. However, um, you could have all of your eggs in the, the market and you might need to pull it out right now and the market's down right now. Uh, although we're not worried about that because we, all, we have both, right? So if you're diversified, and um, of course, talk to your financial planner about that. There are some people that have uh, figured out how to make this work for them full time, but I have people that are like, yeah, I just want to day trade. But then if they don't have a strong enough portfolio or diversified enough portfolio, then they're struggling when the market is down, when they need access to that money. Does that make sense? Okay, so freedom is in the B quadrant. And your next fill in says a team of 25 associates. When you have a team of 25 associates, you're now in the B quadrant. Until then, consider yourself self-employed. If you have less than 25, you have less than 25 associates on your team that are active, you're still self-employed. Because a lot of your income in the business until then is dependent upon yourself. yourself. yourself right? Your asset. So, yeah. Did I do that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, what is the solution? What's the solution? Recruiting. 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 That's your next fill-in. Recruiting is the answer. Rita, all right? Recruiting is the answer. If you need to make more money, recruit. And together, you'll make more. That's the first, then that next fill-in. The fill-in after that, if you need to sell more memberships, Recruit, and together you'll sell more. If you need to qualify for senior director or executive director, recruit. recruit. You got it. And collectively, you'll bring in more. Recruiting is the answer. Make Rita your best friend. Okay? Um, all right. So pull out the roadmap to the ring. Now we want to get into the six-figure formula in this business. I told you it would teach you the secret to six figures. So the six figure formula in this business is very simple. Okay? Here's you. And the goal is um, first you want to work on leading yourself. We talked about that at some of the tables I heard, and Linda did a great job leading our table over there. First it starts by leading yourself and you becoming core. What's core? The system. The system, but which system? The 10 core. The 10 core commitments. Does anybody, does everybody know where the 10 core commitments are? They're on our team site at startwinning.net. Okay, pull this out, print it out. There you go, Al's got the bookmark for the 10 core commitments. Do you want me to read? Not at the moment, but we but <laughs> go see Al. They need them, okay? So you becoming core, that's the first thing you gotta master. Right? Are you going to your monthly Super Saturdays? Are you um, uh, plugged into the team calls every week? Are you right? Are you doing your two exposures a day? First you gotta master yourself being core. Then, and so you can actually put this in your six-figure formula box at the top of the six-figure formula. Then the next goal is to help five people on your team become core. By the time you have five people doing the 10 core commitments, doing two exposures a day, going to a national convention, doing their uh, monthly Super Saturday, going to a weekly meeting, if you have five people on your team, really, truly core, that's executive director. Executive director, let's say, is, makes on average of three to 6,000 a month in the beginning stages of executive director, okay? So 
five core equals executive director. The next thing is helping these five people. Now you want to help these five people each find their own five, which is 25. I call this the, the focus, the, the core five, and this is the focus 25. But by the time you've helped each of your five leaders develop five core leaders of their own, that's a six-figure income. That's when you've got 8,000 a month or more, or 100,000 a year or more, and growing. So this is the six-figure formula right here. But where does it begin? With you. It begins with you, being core. It's hard to attract a, co a team of five core people if you're not doing it, right. right? Hey, show up on the weekly call, but I'm not there. Or you do two exposures a day, and I'll sit back and watch you do it, <laughs> right? So it starts with you being core. So if you if you if you need that, go to startwinning.net, print out the ten core, or look at Al's bookmark. <laughs> Take a picture of Al's bookmark. We appreciate you. All right. Um, so let's talk about um, developing that core team. Okay, here's another note too. If you know you need to get to five core people, how are you going to get there? Recruit. Recruit, right? Well, let me give you some numbers, okay? When you do 10 exposures, 10 proper exposures, using a tool, getting them on a three-way call, getting them out to a live event, you'll end up with one recruit. Okay? You share it with 10 people, you're going to recruit one. But does every recruit, is, or do they become core? No. 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 So of 10 recruits that you have on your team, you'll find one leader or one person that decides to become core. And a lot of people are like, they're, they're complaining, they're like, I'm recruiting, but nobody's doing anything. That's because you haven't gotten to 10 yet. As soon as you get 10 people on your team, then you're gonna get one person that does something. They don't always do it forever. So that's why you wanna get to 10. How fast can you get to 10 so you can get to your next leader? When I learned this, that's what motivated me to go out and recruit 10 people a month because I wanted to find a new leader every single month. Some people all year long don't recruit 10 people all year long and that's why they feel like the business doesn't work because they're like, I'm recruiting the people but no one's doing anything. No, you need to get to 10 so you can get the one that becomes core. Now what happens to the other nine? You gotta love them anyway because they're all car carrying members of Legal Shield. You want them to love the product. You want them to keep the service. Don't, don't uh, make them feel guilty or hate on them or make them feel bad for not showing up. You keep them in your life. You don't burn the bridge. Because someday they might show up and say, I want to do the business. Right? Latuan, who was here earlier, was active and then took a break and all of a sudden came back last week. Last week he came back. And now he's here in Las Vegas. Nice. Right? <laughs> oh, Lou, Lou was active. How old were you when you were active in the beginning? Uh, 22. 22. And then how old were you when you came back to the business? 35. <laughs> <Wow>. So, <laughs> never write off the nine, okay? They'll become active later, don't worry, as long as you don't burn right. the bridge. Right. Yep. All right? Always positive. Always praise. Always encourage. Never criticize, make people feel guilty, or less than, or pressure anybody. Does that make sense? This business is very easy. Leadership is very easy. It's just point them towards the system and be positive and encouraging. That's it. If you do those two things, you did a great job. Set a good example is another one. There you go. And set a good example. So let's talk about developing these five cores. So that's the next section of this sheet on your roadmap to the ring. Developing your five core. What is happening, uh, what do you do to develop that core? If you've been around me for a while, if you've worked closely together, then you'll see that I'll put together core teams. So um, in the beginning, Linda and Kevin and Bob and Sue were on a core team for, 
for years. We were together on a weekly call. Every Sunday after the team pinnacle call would end, we would get on our uh, a different bridge and we would meet. It was it was Kevin and Linda, Bob and Sue, and then three others who are not in the room anymore. Right? People so some people just move on or whatnot. But um, so we would meet every week. And here's what you want to do. You want to put together that core leadership meeting every week when you're, if you're ready to develop leaders. I recommend people always start a core team, but they're not ready to develop a leader of, because they would have done it. When you're ready to develop leaders, commit to starting a weekly core team of just five people. Five, now, you might not start out with five. You might start out with two that you would consider are have a leadership potential or showing up or core or doing it. You might just start with one. For a long time, it was me and Gus Searcy. Right. Me and Gus Searcy and another girl, and then she she dropped out. Then it was me and Gus, and then Gus would be in and out because he was, he was like twice my age, three times my age, ten times more successful. I was 24. He didn't want to follow me. <laughs> I was working on becoming a leader myself. So he was leading his own core team. So it was me by myself for a long time. And then eventually... Here's why you want to have in your planner a weekly core time scheduled. Because when the leader shows up in your business, you better have a platform to plug them into, or you lose them because they get restless. You might have people with great potential joining your team, but they will get restless if you don't put them into an elite group. Does that make sense? Yes. So put together a core development leadership team, and every week, you're going to do three things when you meet on that call. Three. Three things. You're going to, number one, you're going to pour into them with leadership principles. Darnell Self doesn't teach his team what to do. Darnell teaches his team how to be. Teaches his team how to show up five minutes early, right, Keith? How to, how to say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yeah. Right? They, they teach their team how to be. And so on these leadership calls, if you're like, oh, I don't know what to teach because I'm just trying to figure it out myself, you've all got a book in front of you. Just read a, a, a two pages or so or a paragraph from one of your leadership books that you're reading. Pour into them the good stuff. Maybe even once, do you guys remember when we went through 21 Irrefutable Laws of yes. Leadership? Yes. And each week it was one of your turn to teach on the chapter. Yeah. So each week for 21 weeks, it would be Kevin's turn, then it would be Linda's turn, then it was Sue's turn, then it was Bob, and all the other leaders that were on that call. Yeah, I just want to say that when we were on this, this core team, what Liz and Dave did was they, they took us to the next level through key performance, things that we needed to do. So they, they brought us to a leadership point, and then refined within that leadership what good leaders do through examples and everything else. And that, take, that took us to the next level as well. Yeah. I remember that. It's right. the five KPIs, right. which we're now teaching on a different core call that I'm running, um, for example, that Lou is a part of right now, um, people that are running for executive director. Okay. And every week we're meeting on there, uh, doing, doing those activity. That's the second component. So the first one is pour into them with leadership. The second one is um, doing accountability. So every week we say, this week uh, my goal was to do 25 exposures. I ended up doing 20, but this next week I'm going to go for 25 again, right? So it's reporting the goal we want to have, setting a goal for this next week, or actually, set, I'm sorry, the first component is re reporting what your goal was. You stated a goal last week that you wanted to do 10 exposures. How many did you actually do? And then what's your new goal for this week? Right? So we're reporting the activity. And sometimes you're showing up with zero. Last week I said I would do 10. I did zero. This week I'm going to do five. Right? And showing up. So that second component is the accountability. And then the third part is conversation. This is when the relationships come together. Everybody that's on the core call seem to to blend together. I, I, I should say there's another core call that I'm also leading that Al and Angela are a part of um, right now and Ray, okay, that we're studying leadership, 
We're teaching leadership. There's, dis there's discussion. And there's a bond going on. So strengthen your teams. And if you'd like to be a part of a core team, every single one of you that's here today deserves to be on one. Just let us know and we'll put you on a core team. Okay? We want you, you guys are leaders. You, sh you showed up here today. You are a leader. Al. Just, just want to state because you drew me and invited me into that core team, it took a couple of weeks. I knew I wanted to be there, but it, but it took, you know, how, how, how important it is for me to schedule my time as busy as I thought I was working, because at 3 o'clock I'm super busy, but what's more important for me and my family? And it, and it, it took a couple of weeks, but, but it, it became a uh, realization that this is way more important than working for somebody. That's just, just want to let you know. You know, having that platform there, they, people do want to make feel special. They want to be um, invited in to have a seat at the table. And we can, can put the invitation out to everybody. It's up to them to accept, right? It's up to them to accept. So give people the opportunity to get to the next level. And so have that. Have that. The relationships will form. You'll be able to move quickly because you're willing to invest the time in them. When you ask them to show up or do something, they'll be they'll be there. They'll be there. Okay. All right. So that's that core call, Dave. You were going to say something. Um, you brought up the five KPIs. I, I was just curious if everyone else was wondering what the five KPIs were. Do you know, Bob? That, join a core call. And we'll put you. In. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Well, okay. What were the five? KPIs? It, it, yeah. it, it followed the core, core commitments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got two a day, and you know. Did you read? Did you, you invite two people a day? Uh, you, yeah. Your exposures, right? Did you attend? Did you just bring somebody to a briefing, right. Uh, right? How many people did you invite to right. the conference calls? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was the accountability call. All right. So the next fill in on your sheet is always train on the rule. Always train on the rule, R-U-L-E, never the exception. Never the exception. The exception will always come out. So back to recruiting, okay? If we want to get here, if we want to get to here and then eventually here, how do we get there? Recruit. You want to get out of the S quadrant and into the B quadrant, how are you going to get to a team that's of 25 core people? Recruit. Recruit, right? Who has 100% control about that? We do. We, do. we have 100% control over the activity that we do. We're going to do 10 exposures to get one recruit. We're going to get 10 recruits to get one leader. That'll get us there. How many How many exposures do we need then to find five core? 10. Mathematicians. 50. 50. 50 exposures will get us five, uh, five recruits. Five, five, five recruits. recruits. How many recruits do we need to become to, to get to a leader? Ten. Ten. It's more than that, right? Five hundred exposures will get us to ten recruits. Fifty. Five hundred exposures will get us to fifty recruits. Five. 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 50 recruits will lead us to the five core, right? Okay, so it's in the activity. It's in the activity. It doesn't take a lot to have a lot, but you gotta be willing to do the activity, get there. This is advanced for those that wanna make six figures. Okay, so just know that it's a numbers game. Once you know that it's a numbers game, then you can win. Because Jim Rohn says, I make up in numbers what I lack in skill. He says, if you go out and talk to 10 and get one, but it takes me 100 to get one, I'll go out and talk to 200 and get two, and I beat you. <laughs> so you can make up an activity which you lack in skill. If you know the numbers, the numbers are your friend. All right, the, the next villain is the largest income earners in Legal Shield, majored in recruiting. recruiting. Brian Carruthers, for example. Brian Carruthers, 
focused on recruiting. And as a result, he's got one of the largest teams. He is a seven-figure earner. He's the number one income earner in the company. Dave Savola, before him, focused on recruiting. recruiting. And they all taught their teams the rule, not the exception. The exception will always come out. People will always learn about other parts of the business, but when you teach them the most duplicatable thing. The funny thing is, I was on a call with somebody, and she said, I, 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 think, I feel like recruiting is so hard. And um, she just didn't know the numbers. And I said to her, I said, Melody, actually membership, selling memberships takes more skill than recruiting people. Selling memberships requires you to know, have product knowledge, and for you to do a presentation, to learn how to do that sit-down presentation, to do all that stuff, and to, to close, and to sign up, ask for the sale, close, and get the sale. Recruiting is all third party. Recruiting is showing a tool, showing a video, getting them on a three-way call for an expert to answer, them the, quest answer the question, pointing towards the business briefing for them to show up at a live event or a Zoom, right? Having the expert close the prospect. So actually, less skill is required for recruiting. How many exposures, Melody, are you doing that are recruiting exposures? Oh, they're not. I'm focused on small business exposures. But that's great if she wants to be number one in small business, which is one of her goals. However, she's complaining about not building a team. So I said, Melody, in addition to your small business exposure goals, have an ex a recruiting exposure goal. Can you expose two people a day to the opportunity? Right? If you're planting apple seeds, you can expect apples. apples. If you're planting orange seeds, you can expect oranges. Okay? So, uh, all right, the next, the next, let's see, balancing your time. No, you still have to All that. Oh, one more thing is when it comes to developing your focus 25, how do you get there? How do you help your five develop their five? Is that it? Can anyone guess? How do you help your five develop their five? Put them in the system. Put plug them into the system. How do you find them to plug them into the system? Tap, tap rooting. Tap rooting to help your new people find people. But how we've been able to help people develop their five is, and help them go executive director, is by through welcome calls. Welcome calls to your team. Welcome calls are such a great, is such a great thing to scout for talent. AJ's so good at doing this. He makes a welcome call to every new person that joins his team. He's able to find, yeah, this person's a star, right? F scout for the talent. And then as soon as you get them, put them on the core team when you find a leader. So making those welcome calls. Another thing you can do is help each one of your leaders start their own core call when they're ready for that, when they're ready to go for that executive director run. Okay. The next fill-in. Is the most attractive thing about a leader is consistency. consistency. The most attractive thing that you could do 